Rhea Bond. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> I'm proud to rise on behalf of New Zealand First and speak to the third reading of the Shop Trading Hours Amendment Bill. And that's because, Mr Speaker, this bill is an absolute ticking time bomb for our territorial authorities, for local democracy to take effect, for our families, for our employees and our employers. And I will speak to each one of these travesties, Mr Speaker, throughout my call today. Mr Speaker, despite the fact that this bill has gone through all passages bills go through this House, despite the fact that local government New Zealand and local councils did not want this government to dump this complex, confusing, cost-adding exercise onto local councils, despite the fact that our families are being forced to spend less time together, and to, despite the fact that tinkering with employment rights and those unintended consequences on job speaker, seekers this bill, this bill, Mr Speaker, will now allow the statutory restrictions on shops opening on Easter Sunday to be removed by granting the territorial authorities the power to create a local policy to permit all shops to open in all or some parts of the territorial districts on Easter Sunday. Mr Speaker, New Zealand First believes that local government is the exerciser of democracy at the local level. This is a fundamental part of New Zealand's government structure. And, we, and what we have noticed is the, um, the scope and the nature of the um, changing about how councils handle this. And also, under this National League government, I would have thought they would have considered a more appropriate approach to this. And something like allowing our, our local councils to give our communities a choice on where the shops open on Easter Sunday in their districts by holding a local referendum. Right. They, they are now being forced to through a policy mechanism. This would have, in fact, given our communities choices before local councils take on more financial burdens. We heard submitters through um, voice, actually, the real impact and concern of the financial burden being unfair and unnecessarily to them. Ratepayers who are already struggling, local councils who do not want this financial burden have been ignored. New Zealand First has multiple issues with this bill, Mr Speaker. New Zealand, Fe New Zealand First believes that this sets the tone of the legislation in its entirety and does not take into, into satisfactory uh, consideration the degree of citizen engagement with local body decision-making processes. This leads the general public and this side of the House. It leads us to believe that this government lacks the intestinal fortitude to actually apply common sense to this bill. Now let's touch on families. Families in New Zealand only get three and a half days per year to spend time together, like doing family things, like holidays, special occasions, weddings, birthdays, unveilings. This bill strips away the rights of families who choose to spend Easter Sunday weekend, sorry, Easter weekend together. Families do understand that Easter Sunday is a restricted trading day, as it stands. However, it is surrounded by public holidays, which is why our families go away to rejuvenate, to recharge. Um, and families, they deserve to do that, Mr Speaker. This government is refusing families time together where they can create rituals not based on shopping but on celebrating together, reconnecting and making memories. Because unlike members of this House, many families cannot afford to do that as some members have become accustomed to being able to afford to do it. This bill claims to recognise the significance of Easter Sunday and allows all shop workers the right to refuse to work on Easter Sunday. Through the provision of initiating a personal grievance claim where an employer requests a shop worker to work on Easter Sunday or treats a shop worker adversely because he or she refused to work on that day. New Zealand First believes that the state must refrain from interference in the employer-employee relationship, instead leaving such matters to the Employment Relations Authority. The vested body in New Zealand with the expertise to solve employment relationship problems. That, furthermore, by legislating for such provisions within this bill, it erodes the ERA, whilst also utilising resource unnecessarily, thus wasting taxpayer money. This bill also allows for an employee and an employer, as the Minister alluded to earlier, to renegotiate annually whether they will work on Easter Sunday. It also allows for a 14 days notice for the employee to retract that promise to the employer. 
And as I've said, I don't know what background Minister Woodhouse comes from or where most of the government members come from, but surely, surely they can see that this bill will create difficulties within the workplace. Employees and employers are still forced to go through the personal grievance process, which is harrowing, devastating and absolutely unnecessary. Mr Speaker, through the Committee of the Whole House process, the Minister did not address the unintended consequences on job seekers, and that in itself is a travesty. Now, let's talk about this bill being a conscious vote. Mr Speaker, public scrutiny of this bill has been given a boost by famous New Zealanders commenting on the travesties inside of this bill. And I just want to point out to the members of this House that in 1977, when Labor proposed to vote on party lines on this very issue, National strongly objected in the parliamentary debate, saying these sorts of issues should be a conscious issue. That National were disappointed at the time that the Labour Party should exercise the party whip on an issue like this. However, the National Party caucus has agreed to treat the current bill as a government measure rather than a conscious issue, meaning they, would, they have agreed to vote alongside the party line. A bill like this bill that we are again looking at today has been through this House eight times, the same, with the same old proposals that we have seen year after year and have been repackaged and re-presented in Parliament in this year's bill. As Honourable Michael Woodhouse said at its introduction to Parliament, the present bill is modelled on Todd McClay's 2009 private member's bill, which was defeated in a conscious vote. Mr Speaker, conscious votes are a significant constitutional safeguard against forcing members of Parliament to vote along party lines on ethical issues which transcend party politics. Easter trading has long been treated as one of these issues, and this was recognised by the Speaker in the votes on both the first and second readings of this bill. That is because national members agreed to vote along the party lines, despite a long history of conscious votes on this issue. Mr Speaker, New Zealand First members have the intestinal fortitude and will continue to oppose this bill because this bill is a get-stuffed New Zealand bill from that government. Well yeah. Simon O'Connor.